Welcome back to the kitchen everybody. This is your boy the Mad Chef and this is a continuation of our brand new series called Dessert Challenges where I face off against my arch nemesis in the kitchen otherwise known as dessert. And we're going to continue riffing off the last video. We're going to continue going for those donut shop classics. Maybe we should just call this the Mad Donut Shop when I do this. I don't know, you decide. This is going to be one of my absolute favorite items from any donut shop. This is the Apple Fritter. And you guys might be wondering why I have two different bowls set out for two different kinds of batters. We're going to be using the same kind of dough, but we're going to be using two different apples. Of course, we're going to go with the traditional standard Granny Smith apple for one batch. And then I just recently discovered you can do this with Honeycrisp apples. So we're going to do the next batch with Honeycrisp. So with that being said, let's get started. All right. So in each one of these bowls, is one and a third of a cup of all-purpose flour and to that we're going to be adding two tablespoons of granulated sugar a teaspoon of yeasty boys otherwise known as active dry yeast or rapid rise and then a half a teaspoon of kosher salt again both of these are going to be getting treated the exact same way all right we want to go ahead and stir that together and make sure everybody gets know each other pretty well this is going to be a little bit of a different direction than uh the last donut video i did okay and to each of these is going to be a measured half cup of your milk of choice heated to about 120 degrees fahrenheit that's going to kind of wake up the cold eggs and butter that are going to go in there and uh, kind of speed up the fermentation process Otherwise, you would have to temper your eggs and such before you make the dough, and that just takes a lot of time. All right, so in each of these bowls, we're going to put in one egg. And then this is five tablespoons of butter. I'm just going to break this apart with my hands to make sure it mixes a little more evenly. And each batch gets, you know, five tablespoons of butter. And just kind of like we did with the last video with the Boston Cream Donuts, this is going to be kind of a sticky batter. We're going to be able to make it governable and work with it. It's not going to require quite as much flour and uh, arm work as the Boston Cream Donuts. And the one thing that I see missing in pretty much every last one of these online recipes for homemade apple fritters is the lack of use of vanilla. Now, I work at a job in a place that makes not only incredible food, but incredible donuts. And uh, they honestly have some of the best apple fritters I've ever had in my life. No, I was not paid to say that. And each of them have a taste of vanilla. And whenever I bite into an apple fritter, I expect to at least have some of that flavor there. So we're going to go with a teaspoon of real vanilla. And we're going to mix this up until it starts to form somewhat of a shaggy but consistent dough mass. This didn't take very long to come together. Once you have a dough mass, that looks something like this. We're gonna go ahead and put this out on our cutting board that's been lightly floured. And all that we're trying to do is work this gently with our hands to build a little bit of strength, but we're also trying to combine that butter in the rest of the way. So we're gonna knead this very gently for about three to four minutes until all of our butter has dissolved and we're not seeing any chunks of that floating around. Honestly, the slap and fold method works pretty good for this. So I'm going to show you that real quick. If you don't know it, take your dough, literally, slap it, fold it, turn it over, do the same thing. This also helps with uh, lamination of the dough, which is what a lot of artisanal European bakers do with their donuts and breads. So once you get a mass that looks like this and all your butter has dissolved, we're going to return this to the bowl that it was originally from, cover it with plastic wrap, and then let it rise and proof for two hours. We're going to do the same thing with this one, and I'll see you after that. So this calls for two of each apple per each dough recipe. So we've got two Granny Smith, and we've got two Honeycrisp. And guys, when I say I love Honeycrisp apples, I get a three-pound bag of these guys, and I demolish them within two weeks. They're absolutely my favorite. Now, the cooking is going to be about the same for each. The only difference is we're going to have to add a little extra acidity to these Honeycrisp apples because they are just a little bit sweeter than Granny Smith, 
Granny Smith, as we all know, are kind of tart, so they're not going to need any additional acidity to make it work. Most of your apple fritters from the donut shop are made with these because they are the ideal baking apple because of their tartness and how versatile they are when cooked and everything else like that. Your cooked apples, stuff like that for apple pie, nine times out of ten, it's going to be a Granny Smith. All right, so we're just going to peel these and cut them into some and dice them into some cubes. So now that we've got our beautiful Granny Smith apples all nice and peeled, we're going to just take some nice slices away from the center, as so, making sure we don't hit any of the core. And then we're going to take each of our slices, cut them into strips, and then line them up and we're going to cube them. We're going to do the exact same thing with our honey crisps. And now we have some nice rough chopped apples. We've got Team Granny Smith on this end, Team Honey Crisp on this end. And you may be wondering, well, how can you tell the two apart? Well, for starters, I cut them. Second of all, Granny Smith's interior, uh, the meat of the apple, so to speak, also retains a green quality, while the Honey Crisp is actually quite a bit lighter and more golden. Now, that being said, let's wash up and take this to the stove. All right, so we've got our skillet preheating on medium heat. We're going to add in three tablespoons of unsalted butter and we're going to let this melt down but we're also going to take it to brown town we're going to let this brown just a little bit we don't want a whole lot of color on it and we certainly don't want to burn it so we're going to let this melt and start to lightly get some color on it we're starting to see our milk solids starting to foam up it's starting to get a light light brown color so we're going to start adding in our granny smith apples and let me preface this with, we're not trying to fully cook them. We're just par cooking them so that way they keep their traditional firmness and their texture. And uh, we're just trying to get off some of that raw apple taste. So we're not gonna cook these apples for pretty much any longer than about three minutes, tops. Give it a good toss. All right, and guys also, don't be worried if don't be worried if your um, apple dices are not the same size. I don't know if you guys ever taken a look at the inside of any apple fritter. The, the the traditional cuts are not even. Again, an apple fritter is not honestly supposed to be very aesthetically pleasing. They're just supposed to be big and, and homey and and tasty. So honestly, if you, you take a bite inside of a traditional apple fritter, there's going to be apple chunks of e any kind of size really. Only thing I want to say is try to shoot for at least some form of uniform. Make sure you keep your apples lined up when you're dicing them. All right, so to this, we're going to be adding two tablespoons of regular granulated sugar. Of course, you could sub for brown sugar if you want. And then two teaspoons of cinnamon. Now, in my opinion, the traditional apple fritter is a very simple thing. But it tastes good. It's got a lot of cinnamony, dark apples, and then just a lot of thick donut that's around it. Now, guys, if you want to give it some more like apple pie vibes, you can add some ginger, some nutmeg, some allspice. But traditionally, it's just a lot of cinnamon, sugar, caramelizing in with those apples. And it's really amazing. So we're just going to keep it simple. And we're just going to let that cinnamon and sugar start to caramelize, start to get a little bit darker. All right. And to finish off, we're just going to very lightly hit this with some kosher salt. A pinch will do. You do not want to use a whole lot because it will turn salty. This is just to curb off some of the acidity and make sure the maximum amount of flavor is being brought out of your apples. And this is about done. So I'm going to take this directly off the heat and put it inside of a bowl so we can cool down. Then we're going to move on to our honey crisp. And about at the halfway point, I want to show you what we're going to be doing a little differently. All right, so this is the honey crisp apples. They've been cooking for about two minutes. So at this time, now that everything's starting to get acquainted and caramelized, we're just going to add one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. And that's going to liven up some of that acidity 
and, and curb off some of the sweetness that's naturally occurring in the Honeycrisp. We're gonna cook this out for about a minute, give it a little hit of salt, and then we will be done with our apple fillings. At this point, we have about uh, a little less than an hour and a half until our dough is ready. So I wanna chill out and hopefully this uh, dishwasher will be done so I can start cutting down on some of the, the dishes here. I recorded a video last night, so I'm still dealing with that. And uh, I'll see you guys when it's time. All right. So it's been two hours. I'm about to take a look at what our dough looks like. Again, don't be alarmed if it didn't bloom to like the size of a normal yeasted dough. This isn't gonna do that. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna take some flour and just flour up our work surface. All right, so what we're gonna do now, is we're just gonna start rolling out this dough into a rectangle sort of shape. Turn it around. You're looking to be about an inch, about a half an inch thick. Okay, so there are two ways that I have seen this done. Um, you can honestly do a low stress version of uh, an apple fritter. You can do this method like this. Put your apples down, whatnot. Use a three inch biscuit cutter like we did with um, our Boston cream donuts. But the one thing I don't like about that is even though it's easier, it just does not look like an actual apple fritter. Um, it looks more like, if you do it that way, it looks more like a, uh, I don't know, like a Bismarck donut with fried apples in the center. And to me, if you hand me that, I'm not gonna say that's a apple fritter because apple fritters are supposed to have the big lumps, the big old warts and stuff of dough. And, and I know this doesn't sound attractive when I use the word warts and you know, but again, an apple fritter isn't supposed to belong on the cover of a GQ magazine. It's supposed to be big, it's supposed to be wide, it's supposed to have all those little crags and crackles and nooks and crannies. And when you do it that way with a three inch biscuit cutter, it's a smooth thing with just like apples popping out of it. It doesn't have the right look. It's not gonna have the right texture. So I'm gonna show you how to do it the classic way. It's a bit more work, but it's worth it in the end because you'll have an actual apple fritter. All right, so in the center, I'm gonna be doing the, um, Granny Smith apples first, the OGs. So we're just gonna go ahead and get that to where it needs to be. It is a little runny. But don't worry about the liquid, guys. Don't worry about it. I wanna show you a nice little trick for this. To help this stick, we wanna put some flour right on top of our cooked apples. Honestly, cooked apples are not gonna really adhere to your dough. So you're going to need a kind of like a stabilizer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to laminate it. All right, see how I got the sides? Roll it. Roll it. Okay. And we're just going to do that again to make sure that we are fully laminating our apples. Don't worry if anything falls out. All right, now we're just going to roll this out into a nice little log. All right, so also at this time, I've got my pot of oil going. We're looking for um, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, your average, you know, deep frying temperature. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and cut at a bias. You're gonna, you're gonna need a bench scraper. So we're gonna go ahead and start cutting at a bias. This is how you properly fritter. Perfect, all right. And now we're just gonna go across crossways. This is gonna make those lumps I was telling you about. Again, don't worry if your filling starts to fall out. What I do now, we want to get a little more flour on top of this, and we're going to try to roll this together. It's important to use as much flour as necessary without kind of drying it up. We're trying to make an apple loaf. So if we need more flour, we can add more flour until we're fully able to roll it into a cohesive sort of log of dough, basically. And this is what's going to give your fritters the look. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to start cutting out little rolls. No more than probably about an inch thick. I'll press these together. And that's kind of what you want to see as far as an apple fritter. So we're just gonna do this for all of our little fritters. 
And don't be concerned if you have to kind of repat out your fritters while you got them in your hand. That's fine. Before we toss these guys into the fryer, we're going to have to stretch them out and pat them out anyways to make sure we don't lose any of our precious apples while they're deep frying because these things do expand while they're in the fryer. Now that we've gotten them all nice and formed, I'm just going to go ahead and give them a little dusting of flour on top just so they're a little work, extra workable when we put them in the fryer. And then these are going to need to rise for another 15 minutes. So I want to cover these bad boys up with their original towel. So the only thing we're going to do a little bit differently with the Honeycrisp apples is because they're a little bit juicier due to the do the apple cider vinegar we're just going to add a little extra flour into our apples to make sure that they don't leak and bust through and ruin our dough okay and we are finally up to temp on our fryer oil and we've got some really nice looking apple fritters here this made about six of each so since we made our granny smith apple ones first that's the first ones we're going to cook and like i mentioned earlier we're going to try to patty this out just a little bit more to make sure they don't, you know, we don't lose this in the fryer. All right. Now we're going to very gently lower this down. And we're going to do the same thing. I want to cook these two minutes each side. And the only other advice I can give you guys on this is to make sure that you are very careful when turning these fritters. They are fragile. They will fall apart if you look at them wrong. All right, and after four minutes, this is what your apple fritters should look like. And guys, these things smell absolutely amazing. All right, so we're gonna cook the rest of our fritters, and then we're gonna discuss icing. Now that we have finished cooking our army of apple fritters, we need to discuss the icing or frosting. Now, I have searched the dark web on which is the best icing to use in this application, and there are a couple ways you could do it. You could just simply add in, you know, a couple cups of um, powdered sugar, or if you're in the UK, icing sugar, and like I have a cup of water, and that's it. But that is really, really plain. We just did not spend the past two hours or more of our lives making the best possible apple fritters at home just to top it with some plain ass icing. We're a lot of things on this channel, but one thing we're not is plain. So buckle up. This is what we're about to do. So in this bowl is two cups of powdered sugar um, and one teaspoon of kosher salt and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then we're going to add in a nice half cup of milk of your choice. It doesn't matter which. Now, when it comes to icing these bad boys, you could dump them into the icing straight away after you're done uh, cooking these donuts. What that's going to do is it's going to allow the donut to absorb more of the sugar inside of it, which is going to give you a sweeter, more confectionery experience. But if you're anything like me, you're going to want to wait until these donuts are cool before we ice them. What that's going to do is going to allow the, um, the outer shell of the icing to set. And it's going to give you that crispy bite that you kind of look forward to whenever you go into a donut shop and get a donut. We want that texture and that flavor. So since these were the first donuts that we cooked, they will be the coolest first. They're almost to the point where I can ice them. I'm going to give them a few more minutes and we're going to work out this icing just a little bit further. And we're about got to where we need to be. So in a few minutes, we're going to get to icing these bad boys. All right, so these guys are ready to roll. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our fritter and we're going to just dunk it into this icing we're going to roll it around make sure it's very evenly coated all right we're going to do this for all of our donuts but we're not quite done yet yes got to keep in mind we have another half dozen to do once this is all said and done we're going to put a thicker layer of this glaze on top and we're just going to let it set and then we're going to try it all right and before you guys start hating on my presentation at the moment i bet you guys I've never seen apple fritters in a pizza pan. That's because literally I was running out of clean and dry surfaces to put these cooked donuts because I have the uh, uncanny ability and talent to use every dish in the house twice to make certain recipes. And I've done that two consecutive times. 
I know what you're going to say. What about your backups? I used those backups and their backups. I mean, what's your superpower? All right, so now that these guys are done being dunked in their initial glaze, well, I actually had to make a quarter of a batch, just a small batch, to do this top layer of glaze. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're making donuts. These do actually take a lot more than it looks. So we're just going to spoon on this last little bit of glaze to give us that crunchy shell at the top that we used to when we go to a donut shop. And then we're going to let this sit and set for about another maybe five to ten minutes. Then we're going to try these guys. So the moment we've been waiting all video for is here. And honestly, I'm quite excited to try the Honeycrisp one because I, to my knowledge, I've never had an apple fritter made with Honeycrisp. So, all right, in this corner, we have Team Gma, which features our Granny Smith apples. And in this corner is Team Crunch, which features our fabulous Honeycrisp apples. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a cross section of each. All right, Team Gma, the classic frit. All right. And this is the one I'm most excited about. Oh, that wasn't even. Team Honeycrisp. All right, so these other halves are going to the wife, so because she's also going to tell me which one she likes the best. All right, so we're going to start out with the OG. This is the Granny Smith Apple, America's favorite. That, that is really freaking good. It's got a nice floral flavor. And honestly, the apples just pop out of this. It really makes you rethink the donuts you once considered good, especially those prepackaged, you know, box donuts. I mean, now that you had something fresh, you can definitely taste where the corn syrup and the artificial stuff comes in. And this is just amazing. All right. Team Crunch, this is Honey Crisp. It's a little sweeter. I think the apple flavor is a little more subdued, even with the addition of the apple cider vinegar. It's good for something different. It's not bad at all. But if you want that powerful flavor... You just can't go wrong with Granny Smith. But these Honeycrisp apples did not make their sacrifice in vain because they made an incredible donut. But at the end of the day, nothing beats that classic Granny Smith. What you say? I like the Honeycrisp. She likes the Honeycrisp. Honestly, you can't go wrong either way. Both of these are knockout hits. Guys, please try this. I want to get finished enjoying these. And then I'm going to get working on the next video because I am honestly too ambitious for my own good. And I feel at times YouTube should probably pay me for this. That being said, I'll see you in the next video. And guys, try this. You can be your own favorite donut shop. Guaranteed.